Hey, and welcome back to our fourth lesson, uh, our fourth private lesson with, with Adelaide uh, as she seeks to earn her white belt in Krav Maga. Now, uh, today we're gonna be working on a side clinch and I, I wanna make it clear that the side clinch is the position uh, from which most of our combatives come from in Krav Maga. So a lot of the different defenses that we do, uh, clearing the hold, whatever it, it happens to be, blocking, whatever it is, we tend to end up in a side, in some variation of a side clinch quite a bit. Uh, it's a fairly complex position, and so you're only expected to understand, have basically a, a white belt level understanding of this position. So it doesn't have to be perfect, but you do need to at least understand uh, the differences between a couple different forms of side clinches. So we're just gonna jump right into it today. I'm gonna demonstrate on Adelaide, and then I'm gonna have her uh, do the side clinch to me, and we're gonna start to talk about how to add combatives from there. So when I have a side clinch, my personal favorite way of having a side clinch is to have an underhook. So it's gonna be the same side arm, I'm not reaching across the body. Same side arm, underhook, and then I'm gonna be grabbing uh, somewhere around the tricep shoulder area. My other hand is gonna be providing a barrier between her neck and my body here, okay? Now when I do this, I can have my hand hooked like an like a umbrella hooking on, the, on her neck, but it's important that the weight is actually on my wrist. So I'm not, I'm not trying to grab her neck like this, but rather I'm just making a hook and then I'm heavy on my wrist, kind of on the collarbone area. Now, when I do this, I'm able to control the posture. I've got knees to the midsection. I can stomp on her knees, uh, which would, would cause quite a bit of damage. I've still, I'm able to uh, grab her neck and I can elbow her in the face, that sort of thing. Uh, if I step off to the side and I have a, a good control over her posture, I can maybe let go in order to punch, hammer fist, whatever the case might be. Uh, but this is the underhook and then the uh, arm stop. And I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why it's called an arm stop in just a little bit. So show me an underhook. So grab towards my shoulder, right about like that. You should feel a decent control there. And now make a hook with your hand, then this elbow, and you're here. Now, got my posture, show me some knees. Just boom, yeah, go ahead. Good, yeah. All right, let's come over here. So uh, not, not quite so hard, make sure that you keep your balance. This should be your back foot. Show me some knees. Here, boom, just like that. Okay, so, now, that's our, our basic side clinch. Let's talk about uh, the knees first of all, because normally I've got both of my hands occupied uh, with controls, so the downstairs combatives tend to make uh, a lot of sense. One of the rules is that my center leg must be my back leg, and that's the only one that I can use for combatives. It's, that's super important to understand. So, when I'm here, I can't have this leg forward, okay? The center leg is my leg, it's in between hers, right? If this one is forward, she has a free hand right now and it's now accessible to her arm. So she can reach out and grab my leg. Now she can take me down, okay? She get, it gives her a single leg. So for that reason, if I'm here, I don't want that foot to be in front, I want it to always be behind. Now, can she try to grab at this leg? Sure, but I can knee her in the face at the same time, right? So. She's not going to be as effective in grabbing it, and I preserve my ability to knee, to kick. If I'm, if I'm more squared up, boom, I've got a good kick there, okay? So center leg must be back, and that's the one that you can use for knees. So show me that. Got your, your uh, underhook. Yeah, there, and go. Boom. Boom. Now, those are pretty good knees. I want you to bring your hips forward to make them a little bit more powerful. Boom. Yeah. Oh. Okay, another option, if you're a little bit more in front of me, you can extend for that kick. You'd be like a groin kick, yeah, exactly. Boom, go ahead. Boom, yes. Knees. Boom, and boom. Okay, now, uh, go ahead and put me in the clinch. I'll, I'll use you to uh, uh, explain this next part. Now, one thing that she's doing really well right now that I have to make sure everybody understands is this elbow is bent like this, okay? Uh, we call that an arm stop because she's stopping me from moving forward. Uh, you have to understand that the potential for me, uh, me turning this into a grappling situation is always there. Okay? If this arm is straight like this, there's nothing, there's no barrier in between me and her, so I can come into her. Okay? So 
leave it straight. I know it's hard to do it incorrectly, but there's no barrier here, okay? So I can kind of bump that arm. It's almost like a duck under. I can actually come around too. So if she has her, her hand hooked and her elbow bent, if I try to come into her, even if I try to bump, it's just not, it, it doesn't work as well, okay? She can actually obtain a lot of control by pointing her elbow way far in here. So while she's controlling my posture, all that good stuff, she, ha she preserves her ability to do downstairs combatives, okay? So now let's talk about uh, breaking the posture down. If I walk up to somebody and try to just force them to bend over, it's actually really, really hard to get them to do that. Okay, but there is a way uh, in side clench we can take somebody's posture uh, without just like fighting their, their back muscles. Okay? So if I'm here, I'm actually gonna reach to the far side of the neck. Okay? I'm gonna pull directly towards that foot. After I pull towards the foot, I'm gonna swing around to break the posture. So it looks like this. I pull and step around. Now notice, in order to not fall over, she had to take a big step and she's nice and open for me, okay? So we can practice being off to the side a little bit. Stay here, stay here. We can get an underhook here. I can reach far. Now notice, I don't have my full controls. I'm just starting them, okay? I grab the far side of the neck. I'm gonna take a step around to force her to follow me. So I'm here, boom. Oh, and disengage. Okay, so let's try that drill. Let's uh, get the beginnings of that underhook. So the, the beginning of it. So you're not, you don't have the full underhook. Yeah, and now you're grabbing the far side of my neck. Now I want you to try to yank me around the corner. So I, I, I mean, it, it really, it, I'm almost face planting there. So I really have to re take a big step in order to catch myself. Now I'm nice and wide. So you get a really easy groin kick there. Go ahead. Really easy groin kick. Also, my posture is broken down so much, my face is actually really close to her knee. So that would be an extremely effective knee. Now, uh, training partners, if you're doing uh, any of your Krav Maga defenses in which you end up in a side clinch, which is quite a few of them, I always have this free hand. I'm always gonna protect myself. Even if I really trust my partner and they have great control, uh, accidents can and do happen. So I'm always reaching out like this and protecting myself. If they have a lot of power, I might even look away. Obviously, I'm, I'm not in a position to defend myself. I'm the attacker, so I'm, I'm acting at this point. So when she does her knees, I always give her something to knee. That also helps her because she actually feels something. She's actually making contact with a part of my body, so she knows what it feels like uh, as she reaches out with those knees, okay? Now, second thing. As I get this and I break the posture, boom, like this, I want to make sure that my stance uh, remains the way that it should be at all times. So I don't want to pull her like this, I want to make sure that I'm taking a big step back with my foot. So I'm reaching back here. I've got a good stance and she doesn't. If I end up nice and sideways like this, one of the ways that I, I throw my knee uh, that can help, I'm, I always try to rack the jaw if I can. So rather than driving up, you certainly can, but you can also kind of come up and clip the jaw like that. I want to be in my side clench just like this. Okay, so show me that. Yeah, good. Oh, very nice. Okay, so now uh, that's the side clinch with the underhook. Uh, slightly easier, more simplistic way of grabbing, especially during the winter time when people are wearing jackets, uh, you know, sturdy exterior clothing like that. I actually can grab that material now. I would not rely on a t-shirt uh, to control somebody because a t-shirt, even if it doesn't tear, it will stretch and it just doesn't give me very much control. If you're wearing a, a jacket right now that had a, a collar or a hood that I can grab, uh, that can be more of a two hand and I can even pr uh, have a stiff arm there. So I'm not really concerned with her ducking under as much if I have a really good hold on some, on some clothing here, right? So if I'm here, I can provide a stiff arm I can drive knees straight into the abdomen this sort of thing but it just looks more like this so I don't have uh, uh, the underhook not gonna be as much control I'm just kind of here okay and I'm hitting now 
The same is true though, can't let, I can't uh, give her this leg. I wanna have that leg back, and that's the one that I use for combatives, okay? So now let's do, uh, let's incorporate the uh, two-hand front choke from our last lesson. This is what I wanna see you do. Now I want you to do the, clear the hold, and now I want you to clear that. We can do that combative. And now we can dip in, take the posture, one good knee, and then move away. Does that make sense? You wanna see that again or you got it? I should again. Okay, I'll show it one more time. So you grab. So I'm gonna reach up, boom, clear. I'm gonna get her arms out of my way. I'm gonna throw my uh, side hammer fist as I'm protecting myself and as I reach in, I'm here. Now I'm gonna take her posture, boom. Now I'm out. All right, let's give that a try. Okay. So you clear the hold, boom, clear my arms, hit, boom, oh, yeah. Take that posture, oh, yeah, yeah. Good. Now, make sure you're not trying to, like, trying to force me to bend over, but rather pulling me around the corner. Hey, let's give that a try. Over here, clear, boom, good, hit. Yeah, now, throw a knee or a kick if, uh, if, if the target presents itself. So I'm here, good the hold. Yep. Good. Now, the direction that you go uh, is important. So you're, you're already, uh, you're essentially going the, the wrong way. So watch. When I clear, okay, see I'm close to you. Now, when I throw my side hammer fist, that's gonna be the arm stop hand. Does that make sense? So I'm here, and I'm switching my stance so I have a lot more power. Now I can hit. So, do your clear. Clear the hold. Um, so your side hammer fist there, that's gonna be your arm stop hand. Here. So now get that underhook. Underhook. There. Yeah. Now we're here. Does that make sense? Yeah. Cool. Makes sense. Let me show you again. So all that good stuff. I can be grabbing. I can dive for an underhook. And then I can take your pops. back on. Okay, let's try that again. So we're here. Oh. here. Hit. That's your side clinch. Dive that under hook. There you go. And hit. Go ahead. One more time. Boom. And now disengage. Yeah. So one thing to remember is that uh, no matter what defense you're doing, after you're done with all your combatives, don't just stop. Okay, but rather disengage. That's like a definitive part of the move. Okay, so that is uh, just a couple of really basic variations of our side clinch. Again, you're only expected uh, at the white belt level to have a white belt understanding of that technique. But as always, if you have any additional questions about it, feel free to send us a message. Have a wonderful day and thanks for training with us.